So the question we want to ask ourselves today is this. Are you rich? Of course, we know the beautiful words of 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. A little incident from my own life, when one of my daughters was just a little girl, we were sitting together watching as a missionary gave a set of slide presentations of his work in uh, another country. And uh, she was just a little thing, and she, she leaned over to me at one point. She tugged my sleeve, and she whispered in my ear, Daddy, those people must be so poor. Their clothes don't even match. And I thought, this little person has no idea. There was a beautiful little story we published in Uplook quite a few years ago called, Are You Rich? And I'll just read it to you. It was written by Marion Doolan. They huddled inside the storm door, two children in ragged, outgrown coats. Any old papers, lady? I was busy. I wanted to say no until I looked down at their feet, thin little sandals, sopped with sleet. Come in and I'll make you a cup of hot cocoa. There was no conversation. Their sandals left marks on the floor. Cocoa and toast with jam to fortify against the chill outside. I went back to the kitchen to work. The silence in the front room struck me. I looked in. The girl held her empty cup in her hands, looking at it. The boy asked in a flat voice, Lady, are you rich? Am I rich? Oh no! I looked at my shabby slip covers. The girl put her cup back in its saucer, carefully. Your cups match your saucers. Her voice was old with a hunger that was not of the stomach. They left then, holding their bundles of paper against the wind. They hadn't said thank you. They didn't need to. They had done more than that. Plain blue pottery cups and saucers, but they matched. I tested the potatoes and stirred the gravy potatoes and brown gravy, and a roof over our heads. I moved the chairs back from the fire. The muddy prints of small sandals were still wet upon the hearth. I let them be. I want them in case I ever again forget how very rich I am. I spoke at the prison on Tuesday uh, and and we talked about this very issue. How rich are you, Christian? Do you know that in this age alone, we have been given the full revelation of God in Christ? Moses longed to see God face to face, and, and all he was allowed was the afterglow while hiding in a, in a crevice in the rock. But God came in human form, the full expression of the Godhead bodily. He was the outshining of God's nature, the express image of his being. And we saw God translated into human form so that we could understand We have the complete canon of Scripture. No other age knew this. Abraham didn't have a Bible. Job didn't have a Bible. Joshua was given the Pentateuch. And even after the Bible was fully compiled 
in the early days of the church. People couldn't afford it. 70% of the Roman Empire were slaves. Just one scroll would be worth more than your whole Bible. And then the Bibles were chained in church buildings, in not the language of the people, but probably in Latin, the Vulgate. When people started actually translating the Bible into the language of the people, they were often burned at the stake for it, like Tyndale. It's only been in the last generation or two that we've not only had the Bible, but every possible translation and Bible help, atlases and concordances and Bible dictionaries at our fingertips. We can carry them around on our phone. We're going to give an account for that someday. This is the first time this age, this time of grace, the church age, where we know that our home is with God in the Father's house. Back in the Old Testament, they they thought about Abraham's bosom or being gathered to their fathers. They had no idea that one day Jesus would prepare a place for us in heaven to live with him forever. This is the first time in history during this age where every believer is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, that God comes to live in us with all his resources, and that each believer is gifted. We're all gifted children. Every one of us has a superpower, a supernatural gift from God himself. And this ministry of the Holy Spirit to comfort us, to convict us, to illuminate us, to guide us. It's just astounding to think of this wonderful ministry. This wasn't true in ages past. We have a universal gospel. Even in the early days of the ministry of Christ, and even in the early days of the church, they were to go to the Jew first. And it was only after the rejection by the Jewish nation that Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We have a finished work. Through the the dim ages past, people looked forward to see what God might provide in a Messiah. But, But we've seen, we've heard him say it's finished. And the resurrection proves that God was satisfied. I can walk up to any person and offer them on the simple terms of the gospel an invitation to join us in the family of God, to be forgiven of all their sins, to to call heaven their home. This has never happened before. And then, of course, the hope of the imminent return of Christ. This doctrine was hidden from ages past and only exploded on the church age when we discovered that Christ who had gone away was going to come in like manner and receive us to himself. And so the early Christians, we read, they turned to God from idols and they waited for the Son from heaven. They were looking for the coming again of Christ. This is the first age in which there's a real man on the throne of God. A real man. You step into the sanctuary, into the holiest of all, into the throne room of the universe, and you see a man whose cheeks have been wet with human tears. This was the longing of Job. If there was just someone who could understand what it's like to be a human, he does. And he ever lives to make intercession for us. We're on his prayer list in heaven. Well, the list could go on and on, but I leave this with you. In answer to the question, are you rich? If you have Christ, you have everything God has. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, 
how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You know, this ought to cure complaining. This ought to cure murmuring. This ought to cure dissatisfaction. An empty grasping after material things. Listen, we have everything in Christ. We have every reason to be thankful. God help us to live in the good of this. We can afford to be generous. We can afford to be disappointed because we have everything waiting for us in this life and in the life to come.